Welcome back to The Controller Project, where we make uh, and modify and check out hardware for gamers who have physical disabilities. Um, in this series, what we're doing is interviewing gamers to see what their setups are, what worked for them and what didn't to help others get set up gaming. Today, we're going to be talking with Ethan, and he's going to be showing us how he games with one finger. Basically, this setup is for uh, anybody who has limited mobility who can still use a mouse. Let's get into it. All right, so Ethan actually chose not to be on camera. That's fine. A lot of people don't like to be on camera. So this one's going to be, I'm, I'm just going to tell you about it and show you the footage and give you the information that Ethan supplied. Uh, Ethan is, is 26 years old and he actually games with one finger. Um, he likes games. Like, uh, his first game, he says, was Mario 64. He loves exploration and adventure games. He's also a fan of racing games like Mario Kart. Sadly, he lost the ability to use a standard controller in high school and spent years looking for an, an, a solution and found the Xbox accessible controller and then alt controller. Now today, Ethan's gonna be showing us setups on alt controller. And this one's a little light on details, but that's because there's actually a full technical guide to Alt Controller that I'll be including below. Now, Ethan's pretty interesting. He reached out to me on Twitter. He is a student in college and he's doing a lot of stuff. One thing in particularly is he's designing a game with, uh, as he puts it, he's, I'm, act I'm actually working on a video game with disabilities in mind. I have a few prototypes already. So that's really cool that Ethan is doing this. You can find Ethan, uh, he's got a Facebook for the Adaptive Power Gamers. I'll link to that down below. And it's got some guides in it, of course, to help people set up Alt Controller, the free software in different games. You can find him on Twitter. I'll link to him down below as well. Down below, you'll find a bunch of links, everything we're talking about in this video. Okay, in this example, Ethan has chosen not to be on camera. That's fine. A lot of people don't enjoy being on camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to narrate uh, the video example he sent me with notes that he has given me. This is mostly to serve as inspiration. So you can see how Ethan is doing it. And, uh, you know, hopefully it'll encourage you to give it a try. All right, let's watch Ethan's video. So we start here. Uh, to show you again what the software is called. It's called Alt Controller. It's completely free. You download it and you can set it up. This is going to show you kind of the interface of Alt Controller. Uh, this looks to be his driving interface. And you can see there's different zones available here on the, um, on the screen. So you're setting up zones on your screen and you're telling it what those zones will be within the game. So if you hover your mouse over a zone, it triggers that action in the game. And usually these are connected to like a button on the controller, effectively. Okay, so here we're going to show <clears throat> how to set up some zones here. Okay, so he set up his zones in the other window. Now he's, he's opened his uh, driving layout to modify it, and he's going to determine what each zone does. You can see here that this one, specifically in the center of his screen, repeats the S key every 0.2 seconds, which would be to back up his car in a driving game. Oh. Uh, looks like he's changing that to move to the right. But anyway, the point is you can see you can alter each of these zones to be different things. So here is Pokemon, and you can see him playing. If you look towards the bottom left of your screen, you can kind of see the mouse cursor there moving between the different zones. Those zones visually kind of make sense. You can see there's, there's uh, motion zones and action zones here that he has to do different things. You can see he's even getting into some combat here and going to fight. Go Pikachu. This is in an emulator, of course, on a PC.
Up next here, we have Burnout Paradise. And you can see how the configuration on the screen is completely different than the previous one. You can save different screen layouts and configurations for different games. Here you can see that he's moving the mouse uh, left and right towards the center of the screen and appears to have some proportional steering here, like analog steering, more or less. Um, and it looks like the further up the screen he goes, the more acceleration there is. And the further left and right, of course, is his steering. You'll see here, uh, even whenever he spins out and loses control, that moving the cursor down to the bottom of his screen, he's got programmed to go into reverse. Here you'll see that. You can see him backing up there and then coming back forward again. Now he does say a note, he does leave a note here that burnout is particularly difficult for him. Um, so, you know, don't give up on your first try. Try it a few times, try some different configurations and see what feels right for you and what you think will work. And here, as an example, he gets that boost by moving the cursor all the way up to the top. Super Smash Brothers is being done in the Dolphin emulator here, and he just leaves a note that it is... Uh, He says, watch the mouse. Now it's, it's difficult, um, I think, to follow the mouse here, so I'm gonna narrate a little bit. He's in the motion, like the directional keys now, on the right side of the screen, and then the mouse will shoot over to the action areas in the center. Um, and it's almost, it's just too hard for me to even follow exactly what's happening with the mouse. But it is incredible that he's able to play this well with one finger on the screen, uh, on a touchpad. This is. Fantastic. Okay, now we're going to check out Mario Kart. Now, this is really interesting. What he's going to demonstrate is that you can have two different layouts. This is the layout that is visible for menus. But you see that little square in the bottom left? If he moves his cursor to that little square, it toggles over to a driving mode. So you see here, that here's the menu mode. So he's able to navigate the menus by using the on-screen sections here. And then he'll go down to that square on the bottom left. And now he's in driving mode. In driving mode, the sections on the screen are invisible in this one, so they don't distract you from your driving. He just has that one little circle in the middle uh, kind of to give himself a reference point to the center so he can move back and forth there to steer. The compression on this video makes it a little hard to see the cursor, but he's basically moving it left and right of that center. Here you can see it a little better in this tunnel. Now keep in mind, this is all just happening uh, using one finger. Really fantastic job here. So that was Ethan's setup. As I said before, it was a little light on details and that's because there's links down below to full technical guides. Go find Ethan on Twitter and follow him, join his Facebook group, and look at Alt Controller. It looks like fantastic software you should probably try out if you're, you know, playing around with these things. Uh, thank you, Ethan, so very much. Um, so let's talk about how you can help. Of course, if you have a gaming rig that you want to show off, please contact me. I want to show off as many of these as possible to help inspire others in what's working and what doesn't. So reach out to me. If you want to volunteer to 3D print stuff for people, reach out to me. If you want to donate, that's great too. Uh, or if you want to request a controller, that's great too. Just go to thecontrollerproject.com and learn more about it. I also want to say a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. They help fund this whole thing you can find a link to the Patreon below as well. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Be sure to like and subscribe.